the Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Welcome to the Jesse Blake Sports Report. Whether this is your first time here, your last time here, or somewhere in between, I appreciate that you are here today so that we can discuss the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen being an absolute gamer and the Bills handling the Steelers. And to talk about today's victory, we got to go way back to week 12. Week 12, when the Bills lost to the Eagles, when Jake Elliott hit a 59-yard field goal, moving the Bills to 6-6 six and six on the year, as I said, in week number 12. The Bills lost that game 37-34. to 34. What a tough loss in overtime. And at that moment, all hope was lost for Bills Mafia and for Buffalo and for Bills Nation. And everybody was upset. And how are the Bills going to climb out of this? They have a gauntlet of teams coming up. It's going to be so difficult for this team to make it to the playoffs. And what did they do since that game? They went on a six-game winning streak along the way, beating Casey, beating the Dallas Cowboys, who are frauds, the Miami Dolphins, who are frauds, uh, the Los Angeles Chargers, throw them in there, and the New England Patriots, who were never very good. But that six-game winning streak, I'm including today's win against the Pittsburgh Steelers, in that six-game winning streak, the Buffalo Bills have been absolutely dominant and they've shown except for like some portions like in the chargers game where you're like this game's way too close for what it is and and the even the new england game was a one one score game but the buffalo bills have been rolling and the pittsburgh steelers game today was the culmination of all that where they come out they get up 21 nothing on the back of josh allen and his incredible throws and just the toughness and the truculence and his running ability and everything that you want out of Josh Allen you got with those that first two quarters of that game and and it got a little shaky in the middle as I mentioned when they decide to when the second quarter is coming to an end the Buffalo Bills decide to go for a long field goal in the wind in it's snow stopped in Buffalo but in cold very cold Buffalo weather the kick is blocked and from there, the Pittsburgh Steelers take it down the other way. They get a touchdown. And that's those are the little mistakes that the Bills often make in uh, game management. I blame in that situation uh, Sean McDermott, and I blame Joe Brady for not uh, their offensive coordinator for not running just a couple run plays on second down and third down. They they had two passes, two uh, incompletes that kept the clock that stopped the clock, and it didn't allow the team to run it down to like the two minute warning where. Pittsburgh, if they get the ball back, there's less time. Maybe you punt it. That's Sean McDermott. Like, why don't you just punt it there instead of trying this very long field goal? And those are the little mistakes that held the Bills back early on in the season. And and during that winning string, this winning streak too, as as kind of held them back and not allowed them to be as dominant as they should be in Sean McDermott's tenure. Is he tends to make these mistakes in situations where it's easy. It, like if you or I are playing Madden and and we know, hey, run the ball a couple times here. It's easy. You'll you'll kill some clock and everything's good. McDermott and Brady, who's been calling the plays since since he's been the interim offense, off, offensive coordinator, tend to make these little mistakes. But those mistakes were not compounded today because when Josh Allen does not throw an interception since 2020, he is 16 and 0. One that shows you how many times he does throw interceptions because only, there's only been 16 games since uh, it, without him throwing an interception. But when the team isn't making avoidable mistakes, the Bills are top one, two, three team in the National Football League. They are so good. And like I said, it's because Josh Allen, his throwing ability and, and the weapons he has and everybody uh, and their ability to get open. Today, they were missing Gabe Davis, which was a huge loss in, on the wide receiver core. But Stefan Diggs is there. Dawson Knox is there. All the receivers showed up. Their defense, their defense is so depleted. Like, just casual list of guys they've been missing for quite a while now. Uh, Tredavious White, Matt Milano, Jordan Phillips. Terrell Dodson's out. Rasul Douglas is out. Taylor Rapp is out. And then you have the injuries during the game where Teron Johnson gets injured. Terrell Bernard gets injured. There's so many injuries. So when you see the Pittsburgh Steelers driving on the Buffalo Bills, you're like, okay, I understand. Like, there's a lot of holes on the Bills. And, and that's why Mason Rudolph is looking pretty good here. He's, he's hitting Deontay. And, and they're driving, and it's good. But the Buffalo Bills have this amazing next man up mentality. And there's so many practice squad players that are now in the lineup and, and first year guys that are in their, in their defensive core. And it's, it's, it's good. 
like they're problem solving all of these issues on the fly. And this next man up mentality on the Bills has just been fantastic to watch. And their defense has been doing enough during this winning streak to get it done and allow the offense to do their thing. And the speaking of injuries, the offensive line for the Bills has been such an underrated part of their of their game because they mentioned it during the broadcast, and it's something that hasn't been brought up a whole lot about the Buffalo Bills. Their entire O line has been healthy from week one to now the, the the wild card round. That is such an advantage over most teams in football because that usually doesn't happen. You usually don't get a whole season where there's no injuries to your O lineman. One um, one went down during the game, and that's why it was kind of brought up. But to have that injury luck with your O line is such a key for why Josh Allen is able to sit back there, find the open receivers, or scramble for a long run. And Josh Allen, phenomenal. When he's playing like this, he's he's top one, two in the entire game of football right now. And next up is Kansas City. Kansas City, next Sunday, revenge game. Revenge for those final seconds that they lost in KC. And it's going to be a fight, but it's looking like the Bills have the upper hand. I think when the, when the lines come out, I don't know if they're out right now for, for, for KC Buffalo. I'm going to check while I kill some time here to see if we got some advanced lines for uh casey buffalo but buffalo's got to be favorited here i don't know how you how you look at at this buffalo team and think this casey team that's really struggled in the later half of the season with their defense looked really strong uh their offense they don't have um patrick mahomes doesn't have the weapons that he had in the past travis kelsey isn't travis kelsey and i have it up here now the Kansas City Chiefs are underdogs. They are they getting plus two and a half on the spread. So I'll be taking the Bills to cover that. And I think the Bills get to the AFC Championship game. It'll most likely be against the Baltimore Ravens. And that'll be one hell of a battle. Unless CJ Stroud comes out of nowhere and surprises everybody and takes down Lamar. That's going to be a great game too next weekend. But I'm going to do a whole other thing on the a complete preview of next weekend's games. But yeah, final word on the Bills. Well done. Way to go, Buffalo. I hope the the weather cooperates next weekend and the game is on the same day it's scheduled for. It's only looking good from here if the Buffalo Bills are playing like this and they don't make the little mistakes that often hold them back and they're avoidable mistakes. They're, they're unforced errors, to use a tennis term. That's what the Buffalo Bills usually commit. And when they're not doing that, they are one of the better teams. And I'm not really sure outside of probably San Francisco or maybe the Baltimore Ravens. I don't know. They're, they're, they're probably the third best team or second best team in football right now when they're not making these mistakes. That is it for me right now. I will be back soon with more content. Thank you for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you'll be watching this right now. And I appreciate you. Good night from Toronto. And that is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.